Hi everyone, Nigel here with the DriveWire and I have the 2021 Lexus IS. This particular one is a 300 all-wheel drive. It does come in different forms, uh, different drivetrains. You can get a rear-wheel drive one with the four-cylinder turbo motor, 241 horsepower. You can get this one with the mid-level engine in both uh, rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. This is an all wheel drive 300 and then you can get the top spec uh, 350 um, which has the higher spec six cylinder engine. Uh, first off though, it looks fantastic. Um, Lexus has changed the majority of the sheet metal um, on this car. Um, I love it. Um, some of these creases, particularly the, in the, at the rear here, uh, the way this comes down here with these particular lights, these are sort of blacked out. They look really cool. Standard wheels are these 18 inches. This has got Michelins on it all seasons. Uh, if you get the F Sport, you get the summer Bridgestone Potenzas. Um, these are pretty good tires though. Um, I love the way it looks. The only really unfortunate part is that Lexus hasn't really changed what's under the hood. Versus the German competition, I think they're, they're lagging. There has been some um, development of the suspension. They've improved the suspension. Uh, and as I'll show you later on, it drives really nicely. The other thing to mention is, and I've been driving this car for a few days now, I don't think this one particularly needs, and I would not spec all-wheel drive. Uh, I think A, it adds weight, and B, it takes a little bit off the, off the car, it makes the front a little heavier. From the front, it's got that enormous Darth Vader Lexus grill. I like it, some people don't. It's immediate in your rear view mirror that you know that there is a uh, Lexus following you. These seem to be somewhat fake, which is annoying, um, but otherwise, I think the front end looks fantastic. This is the mid-level engine. It's the six, but it's slightly detuned. So the even though the uh, F Sport 350 has 311 horsepower, this one only has 260, um, and uh, gives you about 231 foot-pounds, which is actually less than the four-cylinder model, but it has more horsepower. I don't know if this would be my choice. I'd probably up for the uh, higher horsepower level. Um, again, uh, Lexus isn't turbocharging its sixes. I'm hoping that they're gonna come out with one for this car at some point. I know there's one certainly in development. The other issue with this one is it has a six speed transmission because it's all wheel drive. I'm not an engineer, so I don't know why they did that. Um, there's an eight speed. Uh, I find uh, occasionally it sort of hunts for, for, uh, for ratios. There's too much of a, a, a gap between ratios for this engine because it doesn't have a whole lot of torque and it needs to keep its revs high. I don't think it's the right transmission for this car. But having said that, it, it is a pretty good drive. This particular model has a base price of 41. It has the comfort package and a few other bells and whistles to bring it up to 47. Uh, Anyway, let's take a look and see what it's like on the inside. All right, let me jump in the back. So this car is the size of a, a Tesla Model 3, which is kind of the key mid-size car of the moment. Um, obviously with the slightly sloping and very pretty looks of this car, headroom is somewhat restricted, um, but these seats are, are very comfortable. Obviously rear passengers get some air, but what I can't find you got this armrest that you can pull down. I don't mind the lack of storage space, but there is nowhere to put uh, your extra super large. Big gulp, uh, if you so wish. So that's a bit of a miss. A little bit of room here for your phone and stuff like that. Um, there's no power uh, for rear seat passengers. Again, a um, bit of a miss there. But they are comfortable and I could see um, you could spend a little bit of time uh, possibly on a long road trip and you wouldn't have a sore bum. All right, trunk space is pretty generous. I got up a couple of things in the back here. This is fairly low to load. It does go quite a long way back. Lexus has kindly uh, given us a, uh, a virtual reality or VR, VR goggles. I'm not sure why, uh, seeing as I have the actual car, but hey, um, go figure. So in the front, everything should be fairly familiar. Not a whole lot has changed. So outside, 
looks great. Engines are pretty much the same, and the interior is also the same, but the seats are really comfortable. I have This is the only one I've driven. I haven't driven the, uh, the 350 or the S-Sport model, so I don't know if they have um, sportier seats, but these are super comfortable. Um, there is no lumbar support. I don't miss it, but I just get used to sometimes feeling down here and adjusting the seat to my liking and wondering if there's a lumbar support. They're very comfortable, but there is no lumbar support, which is odd. All right, let's start out with, with some new stuff. So this screen is now touchscreen, which is great, um, but it is a bit of a reach. I'm like, uh, you've got to sort of move forward to... to uh, to, to reach the screen, um, but it is fairly fairly easy to use, and of course, on top of that, uh, Lexus continues with their famed or infamous trackpad, which is this thing that is very annoying to use, and I'm not going to go into it right now. Uh, good news is, though, you do get cup holders in the front. There's a little bit of storage space here. I've got my phone in there. You've got two USBs and a 12 volt power. In the center console, you've got the different modes, uh, snow, trash control off, and then this mode. I've tried it in sport. It feels a little jerky. Um, the lack of torque does kick in. I've, I've kept it in normal um, for the rest of the week, just because. Um, and I pay you've got heated, heated and cooled seats. And then further up here, you've got uh, the classic Lexus clock, and then uh, an array of HVAC controls, radio, media, uh, physical volume, and the Lexus tune button, because without this, it's almost impossible to tune the radio. Okay, so directly ahead of the driver, again, these instruments haven't really changed a whole lot. Uh, you've got your standard uh, tachometer, speedo, and in the middle you can scroll through, you can check your tire pressures. You can see your average MPG, it's not good. We'll do it with, this will do it a little better than that, but because it's a, an all-wheel drive, uh, I'm not getting the best fuel economy. Uh, how much range I have left, and uh, I see 17.2 is what I'm averaging after I, after I refueled, and then I like to have the speedo set up in the middle. So let's go ahead and take it for a drive and, and see what we think. So, first impressions are that it is a nice car to drive. The steering has a great feel to it. This engine is 260 horsepower. It doesn't feel slow, but it, it doesn't feel super quick either and I think it's certainly let down by that's this six-speed transmission which is is sort of what I mentioned um, earlier in that there's two bigger gaps in the ratios for it to work as well it, it needs the eight speed now I, I'm not sure why it doesn't have the eight speed if, if it was me and I was buying this car and this one was the one that was in my budget and I wanted a Lexus IS I would get this one in the rear wheel drive car only. I, th I think it would be uh, a much more fun car to drive. But this one handles pretty well. It feels super smooth. The suspension, the changes that Lexus have made, it's, it's really poised. Um, it turns in well. The only thing that I don't like about it is, is at higher revs, it sounds a little sort of boomy. See, I put my foot down there and it's, 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 there's a little delay in the transmission. Now, so I've tried it in sport mode. In fact, we could put it in sport mode now. So now we're in sport mode. It hangs onto the revs a little longer. I mean, it goes. It doesn't take long to get up to uh, some pretty decent speeds. Air. Steering really doesn't require too much effort. Brakes are phenomenal, really nice brakes. Easy to modulate. It's pretty chilly this morning. I got the heated seats on. They work kind of nice. Toasty bum. Yeah, so once you get this on the move and you're out on a, on a two-lane highway with little traffic, this is, this is very enjoyable. The, the point where you're struggling 
is when you come up behind an, uh, another a slower vehicle and it, it can be a little tough to to pass them it just doesn't quite have enough grunt which I'm sure that the 311 horsepower version of this six-cylinder engine has but um, I haven't driven one of those so Lexus give me one of those please but we're we're hauling along here at, at pretty high speed and it is very very composed that I'm I'm very impressed with and but yeah the suspension is really good I mean this is a pretty rough piece of pavement but it seems to iron out a lot of the bumps it doesn't give you that sort of crashy ride the way it drives it's just that I get a little frustrated with it around town it doesn't quite have the you know if you suddenly want to squirt into a, uh, a gap in traffic on a freeway or something it just doesn't quite have enough to, to go there's not that instant um, torque availability so speaking of a twin turbo uh, there was an ISF version of this car with, with that glorious V8 that's gonna go away but I am hoping that Lexus will will throw a, uh, a twin turbo six in here with 400 plus horsepower, and I think that could be quite good. That might give the M3 a little bit of a run for its money. I remember the ISF was quite heavy, um, especially with that V8 up front. Um, couldn't quite compete with the likes of the uh, AMG Mercs and the uh, the M series BMWs. I think the problem is, is that, you know, apart from a couple of little quirks and, and this being a bit too far away, um, it's a super nice place to be, but is it, you know, can it compete with, with the Germans? If you're looking for a, a sedan, and I'm really glad that Lexus is still building these little sedans in a world of, you know, crossover craziness. Um, for me, sedans make sense, low center of gravity, you know, more fun, more sporting. Uh, and and this, is a, this is a nice little car. But there's several buts. You know, spending $47,000. Uh, you know, I do like this caramel uh, interior. Not so much the outside color. It's called Grecian water. Uh, last time I went to Greece, the water was a sort of a funky green uh, algae colored mess. So I'm not quite sure where they get that this blue from I'm not it's not my favorite so I would de definitely pick another color but I would be definitely sort of on the fence as to whether I would want to consider um, getting one of these if I wanted something if I wanted something sporty however if you wanted something just to cruise around knowing that it's a Lexus and the, the, the build quality it's beautiful it's beautifully made as all Lexus are it feels like it's made from granite it's gonna make you know it's gonna last forever it's gonna be super reliable um, in this model with the six which is detuned a lot less stress on the engine no turbos to fail uh, you know I think this car is gonna last you forever but it isn't it's definitely not going to light your trousers on fire. So if that's what you're looking for, you've definitely got to step up to the uh, F-Sport. So my verdict on this one is drive this, drive the competition, and see what you think. I like this little car. I think Lexus is a, a great job on the chassis, great job on, on, uh, on the looks. And if, if Lexus... If Lexus sold cars on looks, then this would outsell all of the competition. I look, I think it looks fantastic. They've done such a great job. And the thing is, the thing is about Lexus is they will sell uh, a bunch of these, and that's great news for us that love sedans because we don't want these sedans to go away. Please stop buying crossovers. Just kidding. Uh, anyway. Uh, Appreciate you watching again. Uh, subscribe, like, uh, make a comment. Please help me figure out how to turn this bloody lane departure warning off, if you, if you know. And we will see you next time uh, with another hopefully interesting car. Out.